I get like a stand up comic mic. I didn't know about <laughs> exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, this is probably the most highly anticipated show of the season, man. I mean, what does it feel like to be a part of this uh, series? Um, first of all, let me just say thank you all for coming for this. Um, are you paid to be here? No, they're just big fans. That's man. not a just no. Big fans. It's like, um, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, it's good. It's, um, yeah, it's exciting. It is. It's a big. It's a big show. It's like you know. It's everything that that you think a big show would be. Big sets and you know, there's explosions and things. Um, you know, Kiefer. That's pretty big. Kiefer's in it. Um, it's exciting. You know, it's. I've never been added to a show as a regular before. I think it's it's a relatively rare occurrence that just uh, you'll have a new cast member just show up and become part of the show. Uh, it was kind of nerve wracking at first. Uh, it's like showing up, it's like your first day of school, but everyone at school knows each other. And it's like the new kid in class. You're like eating by craft services by yourself. Exactly. That music in the cafeteria, I'm by myself crying. Um, but, uh, but they were really cool about it. And, uh, and now I'm, uh, it's, you know, we're about nine episodes in and it's, it's, it's leveled out. It's good. That's amazing. I mean, tell me about, you know, I'm sure you watched the first season. What do you think about it going in? Were you a fan of what they were doing and where it was going? I did not watch the first season. I watched the first couple episodes. It ha I, I just I wasn't a, a watcher of the show. And then the offer came in and then I was like, I had like a week. So I couldn't like watch the whole, I guess I could have, but that would have been a lot of TV watching. I watched enough to get an idea of what it was about. Um, but I also didn't want to know too much. You know, my character was, you know, new, and I wanted it to feel new for me as well. And he, come, he comes in guns blazing, I feel like. I mean, what, what did you read? He doesn't have him? any guns. No, no, no actual guns. I mean, he's, he's out there to shake things up. You in, guys are paid house. to be here. I can freak no, tell. No, no, they're not. <laughs> they're just starstruck, sir. Um, tell me a little bit about the character on the page and what you felt about him. Well, I guess I can be, like, pretty candid about it. When it was offered, it, was, it came in... And it was like, yeah, we've seen your stuff and we want you to do it, uh, but there's no, you can't have a script. So do you want to do it? And I was like, what? Like, do, do you want me to sign on to maybe five years of my life? So I got a whole, there was a time of like, am I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can actually take a role that's, that, without knowing what it is. And I, I got the script um, and it was just this great like, honestly, I was like, oh, thank God, because there's, there's comedy in the role. They gave you nothing. They didn't give you a name. They didn't give you anything. They said, do you want to be... They kind of told me what it was, mm. but I didn't actually see, like, how he talked and everything. So when I finally got that, uh, I really connected to it. It kind of feels like a mishmash of other roles that I've played with a lot of new you know, territory. Um, so it felt, it just felt right. It felt right. So I was, I was instantly like, yeah, okay. Man. And once you got those pages, I mean, what'd you make of him? And did you do any sort of, did they hand you any research or were you just sort of going what's off of the page? I definitely did some research when I first got the part. I don't, I, I've never really understood what a political advisor was. Um, Sounds like you could do anything, really. Yeah, at first it kind of, I thought, oh, okay. So is he just the one worried about like the optics of what the president looks like to the, people, the American people. Um, but then once I kind of learn more about it, it's no, it's like every, every like I'm, I am, I'm in the office with all, with the chief of staff and everybody else every week now just chiming in. So he's, he's, he's advising on everything, especially because the character is very smart. He's like a genius and everything. So he's, he has his take on things. Yeah. And you're going head to head with Cal. Your hair is great. I don't know if it's oh. a good hair day for you. <laughs> But it's just you're great. too kind, sir. Oh, this is about you. This is about you. And your you look mustache. Fantastic. It's just I'm. Big, I mean, I'm just admiring it. Okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> you never know. This, this it, is the Paul interviews. You never know what right you're here. gonna get. Um, you know when you're. When, okay. Uh, get it back on track here. Um, when you're getting into the getting into the cast and you're just sort of making your way, you know, going head to head with Cal Penn and Kiefer Sutherland. What does that feel like to sort of start off in those scenes? So I never met Kiefer until the first day of shooting. Um, which was also the first scene that I met the president in. So it was like, literally, it was like, he's like, hello, I'm Kiefer. And I'm like, hey, how are you? Let's With that rehearse. voice, that impersonation. He always perfect. has that voice. He's like, hello, how are you? Um, and the, we rehearsed, and then we were just shooting it. So the, like, the first scene, if you watch the show, the first the first scene where I meet him, like w that was us kind of getting to feeling each other out as people, as characters. Like, um, And I was nervous. I was totally nervous. Like, he's... 
He's like, oh, hello. We're gonna. <laughs> um, but um, over the last month or two, like I, I've 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 come to like understand him and his process. He's very professional. He's very. Um, He's he's, ex- he's been doing it forever. I mean, he's very forever. knowledgeable about all aspects of like making TV. So like he'll ha- he'll if there's a problem with sound, he'll be like, oh, this is how you fix it. And this is like I know a lot too, but I'm I'm always I'm like, oh, you know a lot more than I do. Yeah. Um, but he's he's all you know. He can be goofy as well. One thing we do on set is play chess. Um, That's interesting. Who who plays? Uh, Italia, Aiden, and Kiefer, and I've kind of suck at chess but I was like well if they're playing so I started to play um, and now we all play and Kiefer's like the master of all of us like he'll, he'll in chess in chess in chess you know what I'm talking about um, but he when you play chess with him he's he's like really intense about it like he doesn't joke Staring around you down. he's like he moves really quick like you're like take your time and go, I don't think I'm gonna do this and he's like Shuk-. and when he gets you in check it's like he says check the way that you would imagine Kiefer would say check. He's like, check. And he stares at you, and you're like, okay. And you like move your king out of the way, and then he moves his bishop, and he goes, check. And you know you're screwed. You're just like, check, check, check. One time I was playing with him, and literally I was just looking so close at the board and getting my king out of the way, and he kept taking my other pieces. He goes, check, check, check. And then he took my rook. And I, and I just kind of zoomed out and looked at the whole board. Literally, it was only my king left. And I looked up at him, and he was just smiling at me. He doesn't say That's checkmate. A- he just makes you feel it in your heart. Just, <laughs> um, I feel like you just let him win. If you are good at chess, I feel like you, you don't want to piss him off. No, I, I have his number. One day, one day, I, I started to beat him one game, and he just went, oh, I made a, quite a mistake there, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, and he started to like, it, and then we got called to set, and then I want like a, I want like a half hour after show after the show of you guys just playing chess. I would I would love to watch that. Um, what's it like working with Cal Penn? Because he's pretty politically involved as well, and you have a couple scenes with him where you uh, you correct him. Yeah, Cal and I have known each other for years. We we met back in the days of I met him while he was shooting Harold and Kumar in Toronto. Um, just through friends, and we became friends, and in L.A. we were friends. He drove this shitty car, um, and he refused to buy a new car. He's like one of those people. He just It was so crappy. Like, one door didn't open, um, which I kind of admired in a way. I'm like, all right, you have some sort of integrity thing. Um, but then we kind of lost touch. So when we saw each other, it was like kind of a, it was a nice reunion. Um, we play practical jokes on each he, you know we both come from a comedy background we're the only ones on the cast who do so we'll do alternate takes we're the only ones who like can you give us one more and we'll just do something maybe which will never see the light of day but at least it amuses us but yesterday at the press thing we were doing I had the makeup woman she's like oh I'm doing Cal next I'm like really so I got her I was like tell Cal that you like his facial hair but then just like subtly say yeah Paula's is a little fuller around there and then just keep pushing it and pushing it and she, and so she did it and I and I, and I saw Cal I'm like so he goes well she was definitely committed and then literally I went into the bathroom and he locked me into the bathroom <laughs> And it took me like yeah, too long to realize that I, I was kicking the door and I was like, what is this where I'm going to be now? Like how <laughs> this is where I live now. Yeah. I mean, what was it like? Yeah, that was at the Tribeca TV Festival, right? Yeah. I mean, what was it like to watch it with an audience, see that first episode and the reaction to the work? It was, it's always nice. That it's so rare that you get to see a television show with like 300 people responding to it. Um, in the first episode, my character is pretty funny, so it was nice to see it get laughs. Yeah. I think we need that right now. Obviously, with the show is so tense, but also the news is coming out. When you're on set, are you guys pretty plugged into what's going on politically now? I mean, obviously, there's going to be some uh, interlapping, some... Um, I'm going through a phase where I'm just not looking at the news. Um, it's depressing to me. It's just, there's so rarely good news. Um, I stay, you know, as informed as I guess I need to be. Cow is very involved, so he's always, you know, sometimes he's on his phone so much <laughs> that like I feel my feelings get hurt sometimes because I'm like I just want time with you. Pay attention to me. But then, uh, but then I'm like, what could you possibly be doing? Are you checking Facebook? He's like, oh no, I'm helping my friend. He's trying to get elected. You know, so we need a Democrat in this position. I'm like, all right. Fine. I'm doing things, man. I'm doing things. Yeah. Uh, what can we expect for the for the rest of? This? I mean, obviously you have nine in. What can we expect from the from the season this year? Uh, I can't tell you. Can't tell us anything. No. 
I can't. I That's literally mean, can't. man. That's mean. I know. I can't. Trust me. I would wish I could. The vibe. The vibe of it. Is it. Is it more dramatic? Is it more tense? Obviously, yeah. the president's got a leak. There's. There's all this espionage going on. The writers. Uh, some new writers. Um, and um, they kind of wanted to sw- change it up a little bit. I think it's going to be more like West Wingy in the sense that the 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 White House stuff is like really fast like ban- like it's so it's spoken really quickly there's a, there's a little more humor throughout there's a little more like playfulness just in the writing of it um yeah and it's bigger it's bigger it's better it's second season there's like big huge set pieces and explosions and drones and stuff like that I mean, obviously, you can't talk any detail, but stunts, did you get to do anything? Did you get to dodge any uh, cars or anything like that? <laughs> I'm really trying to get something out of you, man. Uh, Give me something. Uh, my, no. My character basically just, the, the biggest stunt is like walking down the hall. It's, 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 uh, I walk down a On lot of phone. halls. I walk and talk a lot. That sometimes is hard. Like tech jargon, are you pretty up on uh, technology and that sort of thing? You're supposed to be the tech savvy uh, political advisor. Not tech, but like, yes, he talks about the lines sometimes are like riddled with names and countries and things Things I have to look up. And, you know, I'm learning a lot about things. But, uh, um, yeah, that's the that's the most challenging acrobatics that I have to do is is uh, is, is those lines, basically. I mean, I'm such a fan of your career, man. I mean, you brought a lot of laughs to people who are here in the audience. Can you tell us a little bit about what got you into acting and the comedy world? Um, that's a big question, my friend. Um, nice shoes, too. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> Sorry. I'm making you sweat a little bit in your I face. I think it's just warm in here, but also that. Um, so I auditioned to be in my in the in the school. I went to an art school in Canada in Brampton, Ontario, called Mayfield Secondary School. I auditioned originally to be in the music program to play trumpet because I had played trumpet in the band because I was too scared to audition for the drama department. Um, I, it was just terrifying to me. I got in. I played the French national anthem. I haven't even thought of that in years. Um, and I got in. And for two years, I did I did this trumpet. I hated every second of it. I hated playing the trumpet. And I had friends who were in the drama program. Um, and this one day, there was a guy, a friend of mine, and Bill. He we were talking about the uh, the exams that we just had. And he's like, "So how was your exam?" I'm like, "I had all these scales and like thirds and bump 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 bump," which it takes like hours of training and, and practice to do it. Um, and I said, "What was your? How was your exam?" He goes, "Dude, we had to act like a monkey for an hour. Like we had to literally get in the head of a monkey and just act like that." But I just like sat in the corner, right? But that was like really in it. I got an A, and I was like something like that. It was that. It was that crazy, and I was like, "Screw this!" And so I, I gave up my lunch period to, and I asked the drama teacher, or in Canada they call them drama, the drama teacher. They actually say that. You're such a drama queen. Uh, And I asked him if I could sit in on the acting class. And he was like, he was like, uh, I think he just didn't want to say no to like a kid who had a passion of some kind or curiosity. So he's like, okay. So I just sat in and all the drama kids were like, what the hell is this creepy guy in the corner? I'm just sitting there watching them. Um, but I kept coming and I would, and I would eat my lunch in the, on the, on, in the hall on the way there. And then I would sit and, uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks until finally one, a guy named Adrian, Reynolds was away for the day and they were like well we need someone to fill this role and they were like Paulo could you do it and of course I've memorized all of the lines and I knew everything I was like I guess I can and then I did it and then by the end of the year I had to become unofficially part of the class um and then I auditioned I auditioned to go in and I and I got in yeah, that's amazing, man. I mean, was the first big role sort of the thing that made it real road trip? I mean, around that, that was kind of the, the first movie, right? That was the first, like, big thing. Um, but no, I was doing things. Like, I, I you know, maybe there, there's an actress named Linda Hamilton, who you may know from Terminator and Terminator 2. Terminator 2 at the time was, like, the coolest movie ever. It was my favorite movie of all time. Um, and I got this part. Uh, I started, I, I went and got an agent. I just like handed my resume to an agent and they actually like called me in and I read for them. I got an agent and I got this part to be in a movie playing like this Jewish kid um, 
in Nazi-occupied Belgium. Um, Linda Hamilton was in it. Alfred Molina was also in it. And Scott brilliant Speedman. Actor. He's brilliant. Scott Speedman was also in it. Um, and I played this part. And um, Linda Hamilton at the time, like, T2, you're too young. You're too young. You're too young. You're, too young. you're all too young. There's Netflix now. They can still see it. T anybody T two big one. There we go. Yeah. It's so easy. literally, it was like the first blockbuster in the sense that it actually went around the block in Toronto. Like it busted. That's what a blockbuster is. It actually breaks the block. You have to. People have to like. Where are we going to go now? Into traffic. Um, and so when I saw her, I was so starstruck because it was right after it that I was shaking. And we had this scene where she like has to throw me up against a wall, and like it's an intimate scene. Um, and I, I'm in the makeup trailer, and I was shaking, and we're walking there, and I just didn't know what to do. And I just finally went up, I'm like, Miss Hamilton, I, I'm, a, I'm a, and she's like, what? I'm like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how to act around you. I don't, I don't know what to, I, I'm, I'm a, I can't do this. I just don't know how, I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know what to say. And she's like, and she like grabbed me in her arm, and like she, she slowed our walk down, because we're walking to set to shoot it. And she was like, Paulo, ask me any question you want. Any question you want. And I was like, um, what was the Arnold like? Why does your body look so like that in the movie? Like, how did they make the metal happen? And uh, and she was married to James Cameron. Like for me, it was like a it was like a dream. It was made no sense, especially in Canada, because in in Toronto you feel so far away from like the actual making of movies. At least I did. It was like that was literally like a fantasy. It was like it may as well have been like Brazil or some place that I've never been. Um, and she told me everything. <laughs> And then she like, <laughs> she, she did this thing and it wasn't just me. She like kissed people on the lips. And so she's like, Paulo, that was a great scene. And I was like, Ugh. and I was like, okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. It, it made me uncomfortable a little bit. Um, but um, but it, yeah, that was, that was like my first like moment of yeah. like, oh my God, if this, is, this doesn't make... This it doesn't, felt real actually, after that. Yeah, it made it feel like, nothing could have made that feel real, but it felt like I touched it. Mm -hmm. I touched it. It's amazing. I mean, what do you say that you get recognized for most often on the street? You have those roles like Road Trip and 40 Days and 40 Nights, you know, things that like really stick in the culture. It depends what I'm wearing, to be honest. Uh, if I'm wearing my glasses, I don't get recognized that much. It also depends on the person. Like certain people, you know, if someone recognizes me from road trip, usually it's like, dude. <laughs> like I got recognized once at City Walk in 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 L.A. It's like at Universal Studios. It's this ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> two people know it. I see. Um, but um, this guy came up and he was he was like he's like a Mexican guy. He's like, yo man, how you doing, man? I love you, man. And he bam, and he gave me like a quarter ounce of weed. <laughs> Uh, That's pretty good. There which we go. I smoked. I definitely <laughs> smoked it. This is a long time ago. But um, but yeah, but Road Trip and Royal Pains at this yeah. point. Royal Pains, of course. I mean, I miss that series so much, man. You directed a couple episodes, right? I mean, yep. what was it like shooting that and uh, getting to be some, you know, be with something from the beginning all the way to the end? Um, that that show was just a was just a, a dream come true. We shot during the summer months outdoors that's very rare always outside at big mansions and like i saw you know it was just like for your spiritual health it was amazing the people were amazing mark is one of my closest friends uh it was extremely sad to have that end, even though it was eight seasons that's that's more than most people get um directing was the scariest thing still i've ever done in my life except for skydiving that was scarier um <laughs> But uh, it was just a lot of work. It's a lot of work to direct your to be direct and also be in something. And that show, people don't know this, is a humongous budget. That show was huge. I mean, those uh, mansions you mentioned. I mean, what was the most ridiculous mansion you found yourselves in? Because that was the sets were incredible. The most ridiculous mansion was in the second episode. Um, it was some guy who was involved with barcode readers. Like that was his job. Like he had gotten involved in that, so he gets like a royalty every time anyone swipes anything. So this was this was his party house. This was not his house. It was a huge mansion. It was already impressive to look at. But the the, the executive producer Angela Chesky said, "Like, have you seen the basement yet?" I'm like, "No." He goes, "Come with me right now." And we went downstairs, and um, there was a. 10 foot in diameter uh, aquarium pillar and there was actually a guy with a scuba suit cleaning it. That's how big it was. 
I walked past that to see a full bar. Not like a bar like in a house. You could have walked into this like off the street. It was that big. Full bar with tables and everything. Walked past that to the indoor pool. Not a lap pool, a pool. This is all in the basement of a house. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then he's like, I'm not done. Come with me. That's not really what he sounds like. But... And the, you was, didn't have to tell us that. We could have. We could have thought. <laughs> Hello, I am Andrew Lancheski. We went, and there was a door with like this kind of Art Deco looking portal, port porthole in it. And I was like, "What's this?" And my, dr- so I opened it, and it was the most beautiful screening room I've ever seen. It was a movie theater. He had a movie theater in his house, uh, thirty seats, um, beautifully designed. It was just so gorgeous. So we're all going there after this, uh, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You still have the keys, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. We have yeah. some questions to the audience, uh, so we're gonna start right there. Hey. Um, so yeah, I remember you uh, from Royal Pains, uh, and uh, what was it like going from that show that was like felt a little bit more lighter to something more intense like? Uh, good question. It was, um, it's hard at first. It was hard at first. Um, the hardest part is, you know, as an actor, you look at a page of, you know, when you get your new script, you see your name and your lines and everything. And, and if you, in this show, you, you know, you see your name and if you have a line like that big, you're like, okay, that's three days of memorization. Like it's just so much dense political stuff. Uh, with no humor, there's they can't you know there's nothing there. It's just you got to deliver that information as if you're briefing the president. Uh, that's uh, it's just a new challenge. I think it's I'm going to be better for it afterwards because this it's just it's, every time I finish a scene like that, I'm like oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Because once you're on set, you have to perform it like 40 times, you know, as they shoot every direction and everything. Um, but my character on this show does have some comedy, so that's I think. That was the biggest reason why I didn't even think about taking the part when I read the script. I was like, this guy, this, I get the other side too. So, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. that an- does that answer your question? I think you okay. nailed it. Okay, next question. All right. Hi there. Hi. Um, so given that the show is like so intense and so much going on all the time, I feel like funny things must happen on set to lighten the mood. So apart from the chess story, what are some of the funniest things that have happened on set? Um... Well, because Cal and I have a have a thing. Cal and I, <laughs> some of the if you if ever they were to put together all of our alternate takes, it's basically Lior and Seth, my character and his character, are in a relationship with each other. <laughs> um, we you know we we have this like weird thing. We'll just we'll redo scenes with just filled with innuendo. <laughs> like there was a scene where it's like, so how's your thing doing? Ah, my thing's good. What's your thing? Well, here thing about your thing is it's no serious than that thing. And then, then the other thing was like, how's your thing doing? Uh, something like that. I don't even know if that was the scene. But that's, a, that's an endless source of comedy, as is Cal. He's just a funny, funny person. Yeah. And then Kiefer, if he corners you <laughs> and he starts telling the jokes, you feel very lucky and happy because he'll, <laughs> you'll get like six in a row. And they're told so gloriously. I'm sure he's got some good stories for sure. Okay, one last question, guys. Hi. So you mentioned Hi. that you started off with comedy, and now you're doing more thriller and drama stuff. Do you have a preference, and is there a genre that you would like to do? I swear to God, are you guys paid? <laughs> <laughs> is that a script? So that you, did you already have that mic this whole time? <laughs> um, well, I started. I mean, when I started, I was you know I was doing plays and stuff. Like Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate was like the real reason I became an actor. Um, so like Hoffman and De Niro and Pacino and you know, that's what I kind of grew up, comedy just kind of happened I'm not sure how that happened but comedy it just kind of, I gravitated towards it so, you know the night I did an HBO show called The Night Of which was, felt like a uh, frankly like next to Royal Pains it felt like a breath of fresh air to actually do something that beautifully written that was more, very human, and it wasn't network shows and cable shows, procedural shows. You have to get so much information out that it's, it's a lot of what they ask you to do is unnatural. You know, you just have to do it. It's a different beast. It's a separate universe. But um, the night of, for instance, that was that felt more like, oh, this is how people talk, and, and we can take the time. They also had twice as much time to shoot that. And Riz won an Emmy, which is fantastic. And Riz won an Emmy. So I, I'm not sure. I, I, I just like good things. I like good, good writing uh, and things that are motivated by character. 
Well, you found that in this show, Designated Survivor on ABC. Paulo, thank you so much for being here. Thank Give him a round of applause, much. guys. Thanks a They're lot. They're not paid. They're not paid. They're 50 doing it for free. Each.